All right, in this video, we're going back to simplifying equations, but this time it's going to be a little bit tougher than the simplification problems we did last time. The reason is, is because I'm going to start throwing in things like cotangents, okay? A simple idea to keep in mind, if all else fails and you're trying to simplify an expression like this, not an equation, there's no equal sign. If I'm trying to take this expression and make it simpler, one thing you might consider if all else fails is to write every single term that you see in terms of sine and cosine. For instance, I know that tangent of an angle is equal to sine of that angle over the cosine of the angle. That's one of the basic identities you need to memorize. Well, I don't have tangent, I have cotangent. So if tangent is sine over cosine, that means that cotangent must be the reciprocal of that. I'm going to flip the fraction. That must be cosine over sine. And the reason this is important is because now I can rewrite this expression with the cotangent replaced. See, I'm going to call it instead, I'm going to call it sine of t. t is now our angle instead of theta. Plus cosine over sine. There's replacing the cotangent. I'm going to take it times cosine. Oh, I switched to theta. Forgive me. I'm going to leave that for just a second. I'm going to switch back to t. Oops, that's just a bad habit, or a good habit, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, let's do this a little bit more. Uh, I have, let's see now, sine t plus, and if I multiply this out, that's cosine squared, because that's cosine times cosine, and that would be all over sine t. And that doesn't look any simpler to me. I don't know. So maybe what I'm going to do then is I'm going to make this one fraction. I'm going to put them over a common denominator of sine t. In order to do that, what I would have to do is I would have to spin this out. And I would have to multiply both the top and the bottom of this fraction. Right? Maybe I shouldn't have spinned that out. I should leave that out. Hold on. There, I was making two separate fractions like that, right? So if I multiply both top and bottom by sine of t, now all of a sudden I have something I can put together, right? Into one fraction. And that fraction would be common denominator of sine of t. This is going to be sine squared of t. And this is going to be cosine squared of t. And so I think back to my Pythagorean theorem identities. I know what that is. That's just one, isn't it? That would be one over sine of t. But instead of writing it that way, let's go ahead and write the reciprocal of that. 1 over sine would be cosecant. And so I'm going to finish with this. There is about as simple as it gets, right? I don't know what you would rather work with in a problem, but I know that if I was presented with two options, either this thing or this, I would rather work with cosecant. Much simpler. Let's try the same thing over here real quick. I look at this and I see, okay, I got a cosecant. I've got a cosine, I've got a cotangent. Well, cosecant, you know, I don't want to work with that. I'm going to put everything in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to start off by doing this, 1 over the sine of t minus cosine of t. And cotangent, we talked about right over here, cotangent is cosine over sine. All right, now I'm going to take these two things, I'm going to go ahead and multiply them out. That gives me 1 over the sine of t minus cosine squared over the sine of t. Oh, look at that. They already have a common denominator. That's pretty convenient. That means I can really write this as 1 minus cosine squared over sine. I see a cosine squared. You know what? I need to think back. If sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, and I want to change that to say 1 minus cosine squared. It looks like I need to subtract the cosine squared from both sides, right? And if I do that, I'm left with sine squared on the left and 1 minus cosine squared on the right. That's pretty convenient. That means, you know what, I can replace this entire chunk of stuff with sine squared. So really I have sine squared of t over the sine of t. And just like if you have x squared over x and you divide powers of x out, this does the same thing. One power of sine divides out of both top and bottom. I'm left with just the sine of t overall. 
much simpler.